This is Bob Hoffman, and he's a director of category management. Some of the goals I hope to meet during our Zoom meeting are to know if I can actually see myself working in his position, to find out what some of his experiences are like, to find out where he went to school and how many years of school he had to go through, to find out how stressful his job is, to understand what a salesperson is, to hear some advice he would give to someone interested in his position, to find out what some of the toughest parts of his job are, and to find out what are his favorite parts of his job to find out if his job is worth it and to find out what the amount of commitment it is for him to do his job. Okay, so I have 10 questions for you, but first, can you just tell me what your job is and what you do? Sure, so I am a director of category management at Amerisource Bergen, which is a drug wholesaling company based out of Pennsylvania. We're one of the three major distributors of pharmaceutical products in the United States of America. We partner very close with Walgreens and Rite Aid. So if they're, you know, if you've walked into Walgreens or a Rite Aid or a Dwayne Reed, uh, there's an 80% chance that one of the prescriptions that have been filled have come from either myself or somebody on my team. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. And my first question is, where did you attend college and what was your degree in? So I went to Shippensburg University and I actually started as a business undeclared major and uh, I took a pass fail class, um, which was like, it basically you go into a lecture hall, you listen to a bunch of different majors. And at the time, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but um, what had happened is that I had come across what was new to them at, at Shippensburg was uh, supply chain management. So they did a presentation on supply chain management. And I'm telling you right after that presentation, I knew that's what I was going to be doing. So um, category management is a portion of supply chain and logistics, but uh, there's also a lot of procurement that goes into the category management function that we service for some of our customers. But um, supply chain is kind of the basis of category management. So. I'm probably one of the few people you may talk to that actually uses their major uh, that they attended school for. So it, it's pretty cool to come full circle and uh, really have that backing from Shippensburg. Cool. Um, how did you decide what you wanted to do for your career and did you always want to work in sales? So I'm not technically in sales. I'm in more <laughs> a procurement uh, sourcing role. But it is technically sales in some regards to kind of sell some of these products internally to some of the, uh, the customers that we have. Um, but honestly, you know, so I, I came on to Amerisource Bergen um, as a project manager to help them commercialize a uh, product line, um, which they had started in Ireland. So I actually got to spend a significant amount of time in Ireland uh, helping commercialize this brand that we were developing. Um, and from there, they had a lot of opportunities in this category management function, and it really did fit well with my major, as I said before. Um, so it, it seemed like a logical fit. And after uh, a role had been posted, I applied for it and was accepted for the role, but that was almost six years ago. So uh, I've been in kind of the same role for, not the same role, but several different capacities of the same role over the last six years. And I think you know, it, it, it fits my and kind of the way that I think it and process information really well. So that's kind of what led me to where I'm at now. Very cool. <laughs> okay, and then what is your favorite part about your job? My favorite part has to be, you know, at a moment's notice, you know, we could be negotiating deals for uh, pharmaceutical products, or we could be negotiating a deal for, you know, dog leashes. Um, it, the spectrum is very wide, so it offers up a lot of opportunities to deal with a lot of different products. Um, it's really cool because you get to see the ins and outs of like kind of the, the, the back office stuff that most consumers don't get to see on the front end when you go into like a Walgreens or a Rite Aid. Mm -hmm. um, able to, to work directly with those products and actually place them in the stores for your consumption when you go in there. So um, a lot of it is really kind of different from what you would see on a day to day. So um, each day is just a bit different and it, it really bodes well to like kind of that, that, you know, different mentality when you go into work and it's not just the same thing that you're doing every day. It's really kind of a, a different day 
every day of the week, which is really nice. It, it kind of breaks it up. Very cool. Um, what are some of the most memorable experiences you've had? Uh, definitely, it, it would have to be some of the traveling I did when I was a consultant uh, for clinical drug studies uh, back a couple of years ago. I, I, I got to travel to some of the really interesting places like um, Turkey, England, Ireland, um, I'm trying to think of some of the others, Germany, just a, a couple of the different ex-US um, places that I got to go. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really kind of an eye-opening experience for me. It really helped me grow in my career. I mean, I was thrust into a role to present in front of a lot of people, and it really helped me with just the overall communications and present like pre presentation skills that I had to develop kind of on the fly at you know 26, 27 years old. And you know, oftentimes being in front of a, a large crowd that not not only didn't understand English but had to have interpreters kind of repeat what I was saying. So. Um, <laughs> There's a, a different kind of stress, I think, that goes into that. And it, it's, uh, it's really cool to, to have some of those experiences and be able to kind of travel abroad, so to speak, on, um, you know, with the support of our company. Yeah. Um, what do you find most challenging about your job? Uh, I mean, I, I think at the moment that the most challenging thing for me is that, you know, we have a lot of suppliers that come into our office and, and want to sell us just about everything that they have. Um, and, and the hardest part is discerning what's a good product and what's not a good product. Um, each of the suppliers that does come into the office often tells us, hey, it's the best product, it's the next, next best thing. Um, and you have to do a lot of research to try to find the, the, the silver lining of whether or not this is going to be, you know, a really good product to stock or is it just going to be a loss leader for you. So the hardest thing for my team is to really understand those portions of it and then additionally, um, the profitability that goes around some of those products is uh, could be very detrimental if you pick the wrong product and bring in too much of it. So there's a fine line of being profitable and unprofitable, and it, it's it's challenging for a distributor to, to you know continue to maintain that healthy margin. Yeah. Would you have done anything differently if you gotten the chance to do things over? That's a good question. Um. You know, I, I think what, you know, coming out of college, I was in sales for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, looking back, there's probably, I probably would have tried to find a, um, a more career guided type role as opposed to going into sales. I mean, when I came out of college, I thought, you know, sales was the best thing ever because you kind of set your hours and you know, depending on how hard you work, you, you get re rewarded for your, your, what you put in. And, you know, I, I was really um, kind of like blinded by the fact of like not using my degree and, and trying to use that, um, you know, hard work ethic that I developed through college to really promote, you know, where I wanted to be right out of college. I think that was a little bit short-sighted on my part. Um, it wasn't until I started to start um, down the pathway of looking into supply chain management that I really started to find my niche within like the kind of career progression that I wanted. Um, so I, I think looking back on it, you know, coming out of college, I, I was probably just um, still trying to understand the workforce and understanding how I fit into the workforce. And, you know, I think sales was a, a, a big challenge for me. I mean, I don't think I, I really fit and I had to you know, kind of come to terms with that and really take a, a role that fit my um, kind of traits and, and kind of learnings throughout college. So um, once I, I got on the right pathway, it, it definitely helped me uh, progress throughout my career. Um, do you think everything you've been through was worth the money and time? <laughs> so prior to this year, I, I, I would say, um, <laughs> As this year has been a bit of a challenge with COVID. Uh, so our team has been responsible for um, sourcing all the PPE, the personal protective equipment for the large majority of Amerisource Bergen and some of our affiliates. Uh, it has been very challenging from a time standpoint. Um, there's often times where I work 10 to 12 hours in a given day. Um, it makes it very challenging when I, with obviously having small children at home, uh, there's a lot of exterior demands that uh, need to be met. So um, in, in that regard, it, 
I, I don't think that money can, you know, pay for some of the things that you miss with your children. So uh, I've been making a conscious effort to kind of back away from work to, to try to spend more time with the kids and the family as opposed to just working harder. So there is a fine line between work-life balance and, um, you know, it, it's easy to kind of not pay attention to that line when you get so consumed with what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Uh, you often forget, you know, what's really important in life. Yeah. Okay, so what is a typical day like right now compared to like last year because of like COVID and everything? So a typical day right now, um, with COVID, so as far as, you know, when we started kind of sourcing all these materials back in March, we brought in a large amount of materials, um, which required us to negotiate with manufacturers that we didn't have agreements with. Um, so typically when we bring in a supplier, we have agreements on, you know, all the products for returns or liability purposes um, that need to be negotiated before products actually arrive at the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the materials that we brought in do not have contracts on them. So we have a, an, ex, an excess of, of PPE materials that haven't been used due to some of the shutdowns. Um, I think, you know, looking back on it, a lot of the leadership at Amerisource Bergen and some of our affiliates really kind of doubled down on the fact that, you know, we're going to remain open, especially in the warehouses and some of the uh, storefronts when it wasn't typically the case. So we had predicted that a lot of those places would remain open and would require PPE materials. But in all actuality, I think that the demand forecast that we had put together uh, was a little bit short-sighted and, and needed to be adjusted. So now we're actually in a, a fairly good position when it comes to PPE from an inventory standpoint, um, so much so that we're actually looking to get rid of a lot of it. So my day right now is trying to sell a lot of the actual PPE stuff that we brought in. Um, close to our cost, but enough to cover the cost of uh, shipping and, and some of the overhead activities that go into some of that. So um, right now, it's really kind of a, uh, a clearance sale, if you would, for uh, some of the materials we brought in, just to, to open up the warehouses for the holiday stockings that we have to do. Yeah. Well, it's all these barking, but... <laughs> um, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in your, like, career route? Um, you know, I think on my perspective, if I had to do it again, and some of the advice that I would give is, you know, obviously it's funny to me uh, and, you know, you don't really think about it when you're in school in some of the, you know, language arts class or English or whatever you want to call it, but the grammatical type environment or, or the teachings that they give you, um, really hit home when you start to write, you know, 60, 70, 80 emails a day, um, Grammar is something that is often not really prevalent in some emails. So um, to exude yourself as a professional, I, I think, you know, definitely doubling down on just going through your English classes and understanding punctuations and tenses and past tenses and understanding, you know, how uh, an email is written. Um, you know, you don't think about that stuff when you're in high school and college and then you get into the real world and you're like, oh, I gotta write, you know, a paragraph or a couple paragraphs and make sure it all makes sense. And, and you're delivering your, you know, point effectively and not writing, you know, a book just to get your point across. Um, the effective communication piece is, is probably one of the most underrated pieces of, of you know, coming out and being professional. It's, it's often challenging. And, you know, I, I see a lot of folks that write, you know, paragraph after paragraph and a lot of people get lost in the, the, the wording. So. Being an effective writer is something that, you know, I would definitely say to anybody like yourself or anybody coming out in the workforce is something that you need to really focus on because if you can't get your point across, no one will understand what you're trying to get across. So uh, it'll help you greatly to be an effective writer. Okay, and this is the last question. Um, how easy is it to get into like the pharmaceutical sales industry? I guess you could call it. Uh, I, you know, that's a good question. Um, when I initially got into the pharmaceutical area, I had started as a consultant, excuse me, as a contractor. And this was, oh man, uh, 12 years ago. <laughs> so it's been some time since I've been in that entry level position. Um, 
it is fairly competitive. Um, I, I think, you know, using your network is always a good thing and advantageous to you to try to get to where you want to be, um, both professionally and personally to, to, you know, use your contacts effectively to, to kind of get into those roles. Um, there's no shortage of opportunities. Um, it's just a matter of how you stack up against the competition to get into some of those roles. Um, the pharmaceutical world in, in general has really seen a decline in actual workforce just due to consolidation on the manufacturer side. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there's also been what they call a, a patent drop off. So a lot of the block, blockbuster generic drugs that have come out uh, have already like seen their, their gain and they've actually been declining over time. So it's, you know, at, at one point or another, everybody was very, very uh, focused on, on getting pharmaceutical jobs. And I think for the most part, it, it's probably changed a little bit. And a lot of people are more focused to be in the area of a distributor or um, someone that's in the wholesaling business like myself, because we're able to interact with a lot of those companies and the, the pharmaceutical wholesaling business in general has been more of a stable type environment than the actual pharmaceutical world. The pharmaceutical world, you know, due to consolidation or just layoffs in general, has been somewhat volatile from a, a workplace standpoint. So um, I, I think a lot of people see security and the distribution and wholesale side of the business. So that's been uh, a really positive note for myself and, and some of my colleagues. Okay, well, that's all I needed from you. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> Yay. Well, How's everything else? After this interview, I found out many things about Mr. Hoffman and his job. He has traveled all over the world and presents things to people. He is not actually a salesperson, but is in the pharmaceutical sales industry. He attended Shippensburg University for college and started as a business undeclared major and made his way to find supply chain management as his major. He has had many opportunities uh, to deal with a bunch of products. He gets to see the behind the scenes sort of things before products are shipped away.